Welcome to How to Solve a New York Times Crossword Puzzle. This is the first of four videos. Now, a little background. For me, I had never been able to solve a New York Times Crossword Puzzle 18 months ago, but I have learned that there are a lot of tricks in the puzzle that once you know them, make it so that almost anybody can solve a New York Times crossword puzzle. This first video is going to be all the tips and tricks that you need to know to solve the puzzle. And then I have three other videos, each one solving a New York Times crossword puzzle on different days of the week. So the first thing you need to know about solving a New York Times crossword puzzle is, is Jeopardy that? meets Wheel of Fortune. I mean that it's a little bit of jeopardy in the fact that there's a question and you might have to know a fact or an, or an answer, but sometimes you don't necessarily know an obvious answer. And as you fill in the puzzle, you're left with answers where you have a few of the letters filled in, but not all of them. And that's where it becomes Wheel of Fortune. It gets harder every day. When you pick up a New York Times crossword puzzle, depending on what puzzle you're doing, a Monday puzzle, Tuesday puzzle, there's a different degree of difficulty. Mondays are the easiest, and Mondays are the a great place to start. And when I started, I couldn't even get through a Monday puzzle. Saturdays are the hardest. And I know you're thinking, well, isn't Sundays the hardest? And the truth is actually Sundays, the ones in the magazine, the Sunday puzzle is about as hard as a Wednesday, Thursday puzzle. A Thursday puzzle I'm gonna to get to later on in this video also has a little bit of a trick, and we're gonna talk about that too. Okay, and sometimes you'll see a clue in the puzzle and it will be in quotes. And a quote means that the answer is a spoken word or phrase. So for example, I wrote below here, quiet down. And what it means is, since, that, since that's in a quote, the answer is going to be something that's said. Quiet down, the answer could be shh. But the answer is not a synonym. If you see something in quotes, think to yourself, how could I say that or how could that be said? Next, sometimes you'll see a clue like this one here, which says cling and then in parentheses two. What they're looking for is a synonym for the first word that includes the second word. Cling to means what's another way to say cling with two? And the answer might be adhere to. So the answer would be adhere, a synonym of cling, adhere to. Next, abbreviations. Whenever you see a clue where one of the words in the clue is abbreviated, like for example here, top 10 school, but school is abbreviated, it means that the answer is also an abbreviation. And all they need to do is have one word in the whole clue that's abbreviated, and the answer would be abbreviated. So a top 10 school, well, you could say, well, that could be the University of Michigan. But in this case, because school's abbreviated, it would be U of M. Fill in the blanks. This is probably the most common clues that you see that you quickly know the answers to. For example, look at this one, Willie Blank and the Chocolate Factory. Well, we know the answer is what would go in that blank. But look at then some of these other ones that are more complex. Gray blank. Is it gray matter? Is it gray goose, the vodka? What else gray something can you think of? Words have double meanings. This, as you get into the harder puzzles, this is where this starts to play a bigger matter. You start to look at a word and you have to ask yourself, what are the multiple meanings of that word? I have, for example, lean. Well, lean could mean lean back, but lean could also mean lean like an, a steak without fat. In the clue, sometimes they're trying to throw you off with a pun. They'll give you a clue where you read it as one meaning, but you have to stop and think, well, maybe they're trying to do a play on words here and really means the other thing. Maybe it's a noun, maybe, but it, the word also works as a verb. The dreaded question mark. These, in my opinion, are the funnest and yet the hardest of all the clues to get. Whenever you see a clue and it has a question mark at the end, it means that the answer is not the obvious answer. It means that there's a bit of a pun or a bit of a joke. You read first place question mark and you think, oh, maybe it's a race and I won first place. But that's exactly what it won't be. If there's a question mark, there is a pun in this. First place is Eden, as in the Garden of Eden. It's the very first place. It would not be Eden if there was no question mark here. But the question mark tells you, look at this another way. And Tenses matter. This is really important. The clue is in the plural, 
the answer is in the plural, which sometimes can tell you, oh, there's going to be an S at the end of this answer. More and most, sometimes you'll see in the clue, like most something. So if it's the most something, then, then the answer is going to end in E-S-T. Whenever I see more, I know it's going to end in an E-R. By the way, if you ever see a clue that says something or something, that's not plural. But something and something or a clue that ends in S is telling you that the answer is with an S. Past tense. If you see something in past tense, the answer is going to be an ED. And then sometimes you'll see like one who is this. And that's trying to tell you that it's a person. Bricklayer. And um, for example, the puzzle's theme. I buried the lead here. Almost every puzzle has a theme in the New York Times. And if you watch me do some puzzles, you'll see exactly what I mean. There's a puzzle within a puzzle. That is usually what I work toward. When I solve a New York Times puzzle, I'm not just looking to do the answers. I'm looking to get to the bigger theme and solve the puzzle's theme. Even if I don't get the puzzle 100%, but I've got all the puzzle's theme out of the way, I feel like I've solved the puzzle. I talked about every puzzle getting harder every day. Thursday's puzzle is always different. Thursday puzzles have an extra layer to them. It could be squares have two letters in the answer, which I'll talk about. It could be that the blacks are important. It could be words are written backwards. It could be all kinds of things. But usually the Thursday puzzle has an extra layer. Sometimes you'll see it in the Sunday puzzle too. The mini puzzles are great practice. In addition to the crossword puzzles, there's always a little mini puzzles. They're like little four by fours, five by five. You should definitely do them every day. They're free. Work your way up to getting those Monday puzzles done. And finally, I'm just just going to say this now if you're beginning it's okay to use google if you're learning you don't use google to like say what's the answer to this new york times crossword puzzle but it's okay to do research you're, you're not going to know the name of every author every artist every river every everything i personally believe that there's something about learning how to solve puzzles if you're stumped and you just don't know the name of that volcano to do a google search for that volcano i wouldn't do it right away but if you're stumped and you just can't move forward anymore google it and keep going. He has to learn how to do the puzzle. And the more you do these puzzles, you're going to start to notice that a lot of these answers come up again and again and again. Please go and watch me solve a Monday puzzle in my next video. I'm also going to solve a Thursday puzzle and I'm also going to solve a Sunday puzzle. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave me any questions in the comments.